week, the Gato engine officially welcomed a new 3D physics engine. I'm going to show you a really cool visual coding plugin. And in our five games made in Gato to inspire you, there's a new 2D pixel art game that pays homage to Dark Souls that you're going to want to check out. I'm Stay at Home Dev, and it's this week in Gato. So if you're expecting the five games made in Gato to inspire you, this is that video. We're going to be introducing uh, some new things, including our five games made in Gato. We're going to be talking about the recent news in the Gato engine. Every week, I'm going to be sharing a new Gato tip or trick. I'm also going to be showcasing a specific plugin that I think is really interesting. And occasionally, we'll have tutorials within these videos as well. Just know that every week, we're still going to have those five games. We're still going to vote. And at the end of the year, we're going to have the Gato Game Awards 2.0. So first, the news. In the recent Gato 4.4 Dev 7 update, there has been some really interesting updates. And one of those is the inclusion of the Jolt physics engine officially within the Gato engine itself. Now, previously, the Jolt engine had been able to be installed via a plugin within the asset library. And according to the developers, it was no small feat. We're talking over 500 new files and 115,000 lines of code that had to be added or updated. So why is this important in the first place? Well, first of all, the Jolt physics engine is now immediately in the engine as of 4.4 when it becomes stable. Actually, if you download Dev7, it's already in there. The Jolt engine itself is actually a state-of-the-art physics engine. It's been used in AAA titles. If you played Horizon Forbidden West by Guerrilla Games on the PS5, it uses the Jolt physics engine. In fact, it was custom made by someone at Guerrilla Games. So clearly it can handle the workload and what you need to throw at it. And if you've tested it before against the built-in Gato 3D physics engine, it's a lot better. It's more performant. The physics make more sense. It's less glitchy. Now, by making this a part of the engine, the developers are essentially voting yay on the use of Jolt. And that means everything that is connected to physics is going to be thought about in terms of Jolt. Things are already being developed in Jolt to make sense with Gato. Now, I will note that Jolt is only for 3D. So if you're working on a 2D game, you're still going to be using the other third-party options out there or the default Gato 2D physics engine. Additionally, in that 4.4 Dev 7 update, there was a really cool update feature for documentation tooltips. Now, I've always thought that the Gato engine documentation is really, really good. And it's very accessible. Obviously, you have what's online, but you also have it completely within the engine itself. Now, within GDScript, you can already get to the documentation of specific functions or classes by opening that documentation. Well, with the new tooltips option, you can get information about GDScript functions, classes, a whole bunch of stuff. All you have to do is hover. And finally, Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who watched and participated in the first Gato Game Awards. It was really cool to do it as a premiere and just see everybody in chat. Also, huge thanks to all of the guests that announced the individual categories and to the winners who submitted a video to accept that award I, is even cooler. It was just, it was so nice to see people that were making those games and then also, uh, you know, hear about how hard it was and all the work that got put into it. It was exactly what I was hoping for. And I'm really thankful for, for everyone participating. If you didn't watch it, we did have a game of the year and that game of the year was Buckshot Roulette. Now we're going to be doing all of this again in 2025. And at the end of this video, we have our five games made in Gato to inspire you. Now, when you vote for those games, the winner of that vote is automatically put into the awards. We are going to have a little bit of a different nomination process and hopefully a different voting process. And there's Actually, a lot of things that I want to improve. Just again, thank you so much. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And with that, it's time for our Gato Tip of the Week. GD's autofill is generally thought to be pretty okay. When it comes to colors, you get some enumerations. Now, by using the color class, you can get a list of colors. This might be fine just to do some quick prototyping, but honestly, you, you probably want to use your own colors. The problem with that is you need to know either the hex code or the RGB plus A value of your color. Other than black and white, you're probably not going to memorize those codes. So within the GD script editor, you can actually get a color picker and I'll show you how to do it. We're gonna to wanna to use a color function and you get that by typing color and then our, our function parentheses. And then what you can do with that is actually right click and then you're gonna see this pick 
color option right there at the bottom of the screen. This makes it really easy to find the color that you want. You can get your RGB or your hex code value. Simply pick your color, click out, and you have your, your color input in GDScript. Now there's also a bonus tip that comes with this. Then that color picker, you also have a swatches option. Now when you find a color, you can add that color to your swatch and it's essentially like one of those old timey painter things that they hold in their hand. Now, while we're talking about colors, I probably would just take it a step further and add a global script that would hold all of your color information. Within the editor, you can go to project, project settings, and then go to globals. This is your globals, your singleton script area. What we can do is add, um, let's say just a colors script. And then you'll notice that over here in that global variable option, we've set that to enable. Anything within this script is going to be accessible from every other script in our project. We can open that up and delete all of that jazz because we don't need it. And let's add a, another variable primary color because that's fun. It'll be a color type. And then we can set that equal to, and let's go ahead and use our little color function trip. We right click that, do our pick color, and we will make this a uh, solid blue. So let's jump to a, a random script here. Let's say we want to load that color into one of our variables, my color. We just take our colors class, and then we can grab primary color. So whenever we change that color within our global script, it's going to change it everywhere, which means we don't have to change it in every single script that we use. This is really useful, for example, if you have a, a theme to your game or there are specific colors that get reused over and over and over again, and maybe you want to change those colors. You put them in a global script, you can access those from any other script that you want, and you only have to change it in that one script. This week, we're going to be talking about block code. So what is block code? Well, it's a beginner base visual programming plugin, and it only uses blocks. And before I jump into the plugin, I actually want to talk about the makers of that plugin, Endless OS Foundation. Endless OS Foundation is a nonprofit, and their mission statement is to empower learners globally by enhancing accessibility and education, including the making of video games. Now, what they're doing is actually pretty cool. They're providing laptops and equipment to underprivileged kids. They provide learning systems through a, a bloat-free operating system that they've created called Endless OS. And they also use the Gato engine in their curriculum. Block code is a part of that outreach and it gives a way for people to create games without knowing anything about scripting. So uh, a couple of things about it. One, you have to have Gato 4.3 and above. You can actually just find it within the asset library. So I've got uh, 4.3 open. You type it into the asset library, for example, block, and you'll find block coding, and there's the, the made by endless. You notice that this is also open source. So you just have to click on that. You can click download, it's going to install, and then make sure you go to your, your project, your project settings, and then your plugins enable uh, the block code plugin. Right down here, you'll notice you have a, a block code option. So let's go to our, our 2D editor and our, our scene that I set up earlier and uh, click on our character body 2D. And whenever you click on a node that has the option for a script, you'll get the block code option to show up. And over here on the left side, you have a, a couple of different options. You have your, your life cycle, that's your, your ready function. Every frame, that's your process function. You have some basic transform options like position, rotation, and scale. And then some pretty common options like modulating your, your graph and changing the visibility and, and so on. Now, let's say I wanted to have the, uh, the Gato logo here just move a little bit every frame. So we'll take our every frame block, we'll click it, we'll drag. Let's just do our rotation. So every frame, we're gonna change our rotation degrees by one. And let's, let's play that and we'll see what it does. And we've got our rotating Gato logo. Now, if you dig more into this, you'll notice that there are a lot of things that you can add. You've got loops, you can make your custom variables, create your own functions. And when you're done, you can actually see the script by using the show generated script option. That brings up a window, which then shows your, your basic GD script. Now, is this a, a full on visual coder like Unreal has? No, but it does a really good job of sort of simplifying these processes so that people who have no idea of what functions are or, or scripting in general 
can, can look at these basic blocks, learn those, and then do some pretty cool stuff. While you're doing all these cool tricks with colors or coding with block code, here are five games made in Gato to inspire you. Enter the war-torn empire of fountains as a hooded stranger destined to uncover the legendary fountain of youth. Grit your teeth and master high skill combat against punishing bosses in a sprawling, labyrinth-like world that folds back in on itself. You'll explore every twisting corridor to discover secret items, powerful abilities, and hidden passages. And like Dark Souls, you can also leave notes in an online messaging system to aid or fool fellow adventurers. You can check it out on Steam. Soar above the ordinary in Dorpy, a quirky city builder that redefines vertical construction. With limited ground space, you'll stack whimsical buildings higher and higher, unlocking colorful new structures as you complete fun objectives. No complex resource management or combat to worry about, just pure creativity, relaxation, and the thrill of reaching new heights. Let your imagination run wild as you build a one-of-a-kind skyline in bite-sized sessions. It's cute, it's relaxing, and also created by one solo developer. Number three. Embark on a thrilling Soviet-flavored quest in Cosmic Cosmonaut, where your mission is to secure the Union's place among the stars. As a bold commander of an intergalactic fleet, you'll explore mesmerizing nebulae, barter with fully voiced alien societies, and tackle strategic challenges on every new world. You can chart lucrative trade routes, buy low and sell high, and funnel your successes back into your ship upgrades worthy of Mother Russia. Whether forging alliances or outmaneuvering foes, every choice you make ripples across the galaxy. So take pride in advancing the Soviet space program one cosmic victory at a time. If you really, really enjoy the penguin slide in Mario 64, then Pingbert's Snow Ride is for you. You'll slide, soar, and deliver in a fast-paced, endless platformer starring an upbeat penguin mail carrier. Take control of Pingbert as you drift, spin, and glide down snowy slopes, dodging obstacles and racking up combos. Each run feels brand new with ever-shifting terrain, hidden paths, and mischievous creatures looking to throw a wrench in your deliveries. Earn coins to spruce Pingbert's cozy cabin and unlock a trove of fun upgrades and costumes. Whether diving through secret passages or nailing that perfect drift, the snow-coated thrill never stops. And before we get to our last spot, congrats to last year's Game of the Year winner, Buckshot Roulette. Be sure to vote for your favorite in the comments to have them included in this year's Gato Game Awards. And like last year, just because a game doesn't win its week, it doesn't mean it can't be included in the awards. Number five. Grab your pumpkin spice latte and listen to the rustle of fall leaves in autumn cleanup. Explore four scenic fall themed levels alongside janitor Lisa, sweeping away leaves one gentle brush at a time. The game is released on itch.io and includes upgradable brooms and leaf blowers that add a hint of strategy, complemented by tranquil music and atmospheric soundscapes. Keep an eye out for hidden cats, because of course, and capture snapshot worthy moments in the gallery. For those in need of a laid-back retreat, this is a pretty nice simulator transforming an everyday chore into a cozy seasonal escape. 